Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel Pharmaceutical Concepts. Today let us understand the concept of back titration. There are two general types of titrations, direct titration and indirect titration. Direct titrations are the uh, titrations where titrant is added to the analyte, titrant which is present in the butyrate, it is added to the analyte which is present in the conical flask, okay. And when this titrant is getting mixed with the analyte solution, okay, the there is some reaction uh, occurring between titrant and analyte. And this titrant is added to the solution of analyte until the reaction goes to completion, okay. Whereas this indirect titration, which is also called as back titration, here excess, excess reagent is added to the analyte and then the excess which we have added, okay, that excess amount is determined and with the help of that excess amount, we calculate the percentage or the concentration of, of analyte which was present in the conical flask. So, this is the indirect calculation or indirect determination of the analyte which was present in the conical flask. So, in simple words, we can uh, say that there are two steps involved in indirect titration or in back titration. Let us learn this direct titration and indirect titration with the help of two examples. In this video, I am covering assay of ibuprofen as well as assay of aspirin as per Indian Pharmacopoeia. So what is this blank titration? A blank titration is done without the analyte. See remember this is blank titration. I am talking about blank titration. Here we do not add analyte in the conical flask but we add all other reagents all other solvents which we usually use while assaying that particular analyte okay so blank titration is done without the analyte blank titration allows the amount of reactive substance within the plain solvent to be determined and hence it allows the determination of the error in future titration experiments using that particular solvent. It is usually possible to perform a blank titration where the procedure is repeated without an analyte to see how large the titration error is. For example, deionized water which is slightly acidic, very slightly acidic and it may affect the result of an acid base titration if uh, one want a highly accurate concentration then we should perform the blank titration okay so we will do the blank titration to find out the concentration of h3o plus in the water and use it to correct the concentration of the analyte now let us see this example of assay of ibuprofen the procedure which we have taken here that is the Indian Pharmacopoeia 2018. This ibuprofen is practically insoluble in water and hence ethanol which is the organic solvent. Okay, This ethanol is uh, used over here to dissolve 0.4 grams of ibuprofen. So in my conical flask. I am weighing this 0.4 grams of the drug that is ibuprofen. I am adding ethanol to it. I am adding indicator in this conical flask. Which indicator? Phenolphthalein solution. Okay. And this solution I am titrating with 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. Okay. So this is the assay procedure for ibuprofen. This procedure we repeat multiple times till we get the constant burette ready. 
okay because of the indicator the color of the solution will be changed that is our end point and that burette reading we will note we will repeat the procedure multiple times till we get the constant burette reading okay and then if you observe over here the next sentence is carry out a blank titration so for blank titration what we have to do i'll take the conical flask in this conical flask i do not have to take drug so drug is not there but rest all the chemicals solvents reagents which we have used in assay procedure those we have to add so i'll add ethanol to it i'll add indicator to it and i will titrate this solution with naoh exactly in the same manner as that of the assay procedure okay so this is called as blank titration where sample or the drug whose assay is being performed that sample is not taken not included in the conical flask okay and whatever burette reading then of, uh, with this blank titration we will get some burette reading so that burette reading we will just subtract from this uh, constant burette reading and whatever volume we get here after subtracting it from the constant burette reading of the sample analysis that volume we will directly substitute in this factor okay so here we will substitute it and we can calculate the amount of drug present in the given sample so here this is the example of direct titration where this naoh and ibuprofen are reacting with each other that is the neutralization reaction which is happening over here they are reacting with each other the completion of reaction is indicated by color change and we get the constant burette reading okay and this was the blank titration done to avoid the chances of errors why because this ethanol no it is slightly acidic in nature slightly acidic so there are some chances that it is also contributing uh, in the neutralization of the sodium hydroxide okay and therefore we have to perform this blank titration so this assay of ibuprofen is the example of direct blank titration now what is back titration it is a titration method where the concentration of an analyte is determined by reacting it with a known amount of excess reagent the reagent with which that particular analyte shows the reaction or undergoes the reaction that reagent is added in that conical flask itself so this analyte plus the reagent with which that particular analyte undergoes the reaction that reagent is added in the conical flask but the amount of reagent is in excess okay so some so the analyte reacts with some part of the reagent since the reagent is added in excess some part of the reagent remains unreacted and that unreacted reagent is then titrated with the another titrant let us see the remaining excess reagent is then titrated with second reagent a back titration is used when it is difficult to find an end point in a normal titration so usually back titrations are used when uh, the analyte is not very soluble in water when one of the reactants is volatile for example ammonia uh, when an acid or a base is an insoluble salt for example calcium carbonate when a particular reaction is too slow and it is also performed when the direct titration would involve a weak acid or weak base titration and where the end point of this uh, direct titration is very difficult to observe so in all such cases we have to perform back titration so subtracting the moles of excess titrant from the original amount used gives the moles of titrant reacted with the analyte and from that one can determine moles of analyte 
So let us understand this with the help of one example. So if you see here, this is the assay of aspirin. I am taking from Indian Pharmacopoeia 1996. So if you see here, I have just highlighted it or uh, made it enlarged. <clears throat> so here if you see the uh, aspirin is first weighed. It is added in ethanol and 50 ml of sodium hydroxide is added into it. So this aspirin if you see this is acidic and it will of course uh, show reaction with sodium hydroxide. So this sodium hydroxide is added in excess amount in the conical flask itself. Okay. Then we are boiling it, we are adding the, and we are then titrating the excess of alkali with 0.5 molar hydrochloric acid. So this aspirin, no, it um, passes unchanged through the acidic condition. So in acidic condition, uh, its structure do not change. There is no reaction happening. Okay, but in basic condition, like uh, in basic condition, it is hydrolyzed to ethanoate ions and salicylate ions. Okay, the ethanol which is used over here for uh, dissolving the aspirin that is acetyl salicylic acid, that ethanol as I mentioned earlier also that is slightly acidic and thus it can also react with NaOH and thus if you see over here, repeat the operation without the substance being examined. This means this is the blank titration. So this aspirin assay is an example of acid base back titration where the blank determination is also performed. We have just now seen the reaction. Uh, between aspirin and the NaOH since the reaction is slow we have to perform the back titration that means in the conical flask in the conical flask I have added aspirin I have added NaOH which is in excess and then I have added indicator also okay so what happens aspirin reacts with this NaOH which is in excess so whole lot of aspirin is reacted with NaOH but some molecules of NaOH which remain unreacted because NaOH is in excess. So this unreacted NaOH is then titrated with HCl. Okay. So from this assay procedure suppose I get the burette reading as suppose 10 ml. So, this 10 ml is the constant burette reading which I get from this uh, particular assay procedure. Then as per the procedure, I have to carry out blank titration also. So, in that blank titration, the conical flask which I am taking, okay, in that conical flask, this aspirin is not there. I am just taking 50 ml of NaOH which is stated in the procedure and whatever are the other reagents like indicator and all, I am adding those all reagents as per the procedure which is given in the monograph. Okay. So, of course, here is the, here the amount of NaOH is more as compared to this flask because in this flask some part of NaOH was consumed by aspirin. It was involved in the neutralization reaction with aspirin. Okay. So, here since there is no aspirin, NaOH is not reacting with anyone. So, this full 50 ml NaOH is available for the titration with this HCl which is in the burette. Okay. So, suppose using this blank titration, the burette reading which I get is around uh, suppose 39 ml. Okay, that means the amount 
of 0.5 molar NaOH which was required to react with aspirin. How much amount of uh, NaOH reacted with aspirin? That was 39 minus 10. That is 29 ml of the uh, NaOH reacted with aspirin. So, this 29 ml can then be uh, added or substituted in the factor. Okay, It will be then substituted in the factor directly and it will give the amount of aspirin or amount of drug present in the given sample. So, I hope you all have understood the difference between uh, or the concept of back titration, blank titration. Back titration is also called as indirect titration and we have also seen direct titration with the help, help of ibuprofen as an example. If you have any queries, you can type them in chat box. I will be happy to reply. Thank you very much for watching the video till the end. Have a nice day.